cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. That's the preparation we're making. If the Holy Ghost is going to come, and it's going to come, there must be a cleansing. There must be a purging. There must be a purifying. And it says cleansing of, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. How many forms of filthiness? All. And, and spirit, perfecting what? Holiness and the fear of God. That means uh, imperfect holiness will not do. You look at any lack in your personal life, any lack in your morals, any, life, any lack in your righteous, uh, righteous living, you say, Lord, perfect this righteousness and holiness. Let there be real purity, purity of heart and purity of thought and purity of lifestyle. That's the preparation he wants us to make, the cleansing, the cleansing. Let's look at First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1, the preparation we make for the coming of the lateran, the preparation we make for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. First John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, does what? Cleanseth us from what? From all sin. That's the preparation. We check up our lives, and it doesn't take time. It's the blood of Jesus that does it. It's what sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary that gets that done. And then it says, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Ezekiel chapter 36, the preparation we make for the outpouring of the Spirit, for the coming of the latter in Ezekiel chapter 36, we're reading from verse 35, 25 rather, verse 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. Then it says, and from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. That's the preparation we're making. He wants to pour out his spirit. He wants to bring the latter rain upon every individual, all flesh, and the whole church. And then it says in verse 26, And a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the, what? Stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you, what? and heart of flesh. See what God says he will do in a preparation to receive the Spirit of God and to have the latter rain upon our lives. He says, number one, in verse 25, I'll cleanse you. He says, I'll pour clean water upon you. And he says, I'll take all filthiness away from you and all your idols, the things we idolize. He says, he'll take all that away so that he will be the king of kings and the lord of lords in our lives and will not idolize any man or any woman neither do we idolize ourselves neither do we idolize even the name of the church we just know that this is god he wants to do whatever he wants to do and we're given the chance to do that all idols are taken away and then it says a new heart i will give unto you and a new spirit i will put within you and then it says I will also remove the stony heart. Another word for that will be the stubborn heart. Another word for that will be the self-will. I know many of us know, don't raise up your hands, but how many of us know some people who are truly born again, truly born again. They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's a change of life outwardly, but are very strong-minded. And they are very strong willed, self willed, stubborn. And it's like, you know, there's a stone inside there. And they say, once I say this is what I will do, that's what I will do. My brother, that's a stony heart. And the Lord says, in preparation for the outpouring of the Spirit, in preparation for the outpouring of this latter rain, I will take away what? The stony heart out of your flesh. And I will replace it with what kind of heart? A heart of flesh. See verse 27. After that preparation, after the cleansing, after the removal 
of the stony heart. It then says in verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you. That's the lettering right there. The, the coming of the Holy Ghost, the baptism in the Holy Ghost, putting the Holy Spirit, pouring the Holy Spirit upon us. And then it says in that verse 27, I will cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 1. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of of the latter rain. Ask ye, seek the Lord, pray, and say, Lord, I need this. I need this Holy Ghost baptism. I need this latter rain. Ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. To everyone, everyone, everyone you will receive. Look at Luke it's telling us the same thing in Luke. And here he's showing us the promise, the promise of God. And this promise of God, of the Holy Ghost, is for everyone that will ask. We're looking at Luke chapter 11, verse 9. Luke 11, verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. How many people receive? Everyone, everyone that asketh, and then he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, I want to illustrate this for us to show us that we can have confidence in the Lord, trust in the Lord, faith in God that when we ask for rain in the time of the latter rain, He will do what He has promised that He will do, and you don't have to have any doubt in your heart. He saves you by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. He sanctifies you by the removal of the Adamic nature and the stony heart and the self-will and the stubbornness. And now you can come and say, Lord, it's by grace I'm saved. And it's by your grace I'm sanctified. Now I need this outpouring of your spirit and this lettering to come upon my life. And it says he will do it. Look at the illustration the Lord gives us in verse 11. If his son... Ask bread of any of you that say, Father, will he give him a stone? What's the answer? No. And if he ask a fish, will he give him for a fish a serpent? What's the answer? No. And if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? What's the answer? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give Give what? The Holy Spirit to them that ask him will ask and the Lord will give. And let's look at an illustration concerning this in First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 1. First Kings chapter 18 verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came unto Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon... You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Parallel Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world, and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, if you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.